up guys, Scuba Guy here. So, today's one of those days where I did a big boo-boo. I got all the way down to the beach and then suddenly realised I forgot my lower shaft to my detector. So now I can't hunt and it's too far to go home to come back again. So, in this video today, I'm just going to do scouting the beach and then show you cool areas to find lost treasure. Came all the way down to the beach bought my equipment, bought my detector, and what did I do? I forgot the lower shaft, which is the shaft which comes out my Anderson shaft here, which attaches to the coil, so now I cannot detect. And to go back home, it's too far away from the beach. So I am just going to video the beach, walking up and down, and show you really good areas where to hunt and find lost jewelry. Okay, catch you guys later. So this is one of the more famous beaches in Hong Kong. It's actually Repulse Bay and it's probably one of the largest beaches and it's actually one of the oldest beaches in Hong Kong. Now on this beach it has actually got very deep water. There's shark fetch and nets that are out there and it goes deep very very suddenly and in the summer we have a swim lane down here and then there's swimming platforms for them But in the water, I very rarely find anything because it's such a difficult condition to hunt. So really the best way to do in the water is either snorkeling, free diving or scuba diving. And that is what I intend to do in the summer. So occasionally we get cuts on the beach. You can see one just here. And the water comes up tide and washes away the sand and then it will reveal lots of new finds around here and you can see it's going all the way up there. So on this beach we actually have a volleyball court. It's only a small one but on this court I actually did a ring return last year. A gentleman had lost his platinum wedding ring and it was just just over there. He, he lost it. Couldn't find it. Spent several days trying to find it called me out and I found it within 30 minutes so he was a very happy person after that but people lose rings on this beach everywhere there's many trees all along here and you get people sitting around the trees having picnics drinking and they will lose things coming out of their pockets like coins and there's actually a mixture you've got some stony sand and then you've got some fine sand and that's because this beach was originally um, a, a natural beach fine sand at the front and then the government imported shipped in lots and lots of sand which they filled up the back end of the beach and it's kind of um, a weird structure got lifeguard stations here as well there's four of them numbered one two three and four and you often find things around those lifeguard stations I've found rings I found a Tiffany platinum ring wedding ring um, down the end by number three um, found lots and lots of coins around there and down the furthest end number four you find lots of foreign coins because there's actually a, um, a like a temple kind of the end and you get lots of people putting offerings to the Chinese gods there and then they actually take out the unwanted coins which they can't use and then they sprinkle them all over the beach and that's why to me this beach is really mainly about coins and not so much lost treasure here you can see there's a big cut here 
slopes down. This usually happens when we get really heavy rain and in Hong Kong we get heavy typhoons. Um, we get like T8, T10, we get amber rainstorms, red rainstorms, black rainstorms. And when it gets really heavy rain, you get lots of the sand gets washed down into the sea. Uh, the water, when it's a high tide, normally comes up to about here. My finger is all the way along. So this is from rain washing it out. Or it could also be from the wind. If it's been a very powerful typhoon, it will blow the sand away. The water at its deepest point, out to where the shark nets are around there, that's probably around 12 meters deep, maybe a little bit deeper. I've not actually dived this area to run up to the shark nets, but you have to be a little bit careful because sometimes in the night you get speedboat, small speedboat or paddle boat coming in here and they're fishing with fishing lines or nets. So I suspect there is quite a lot of ghost nets or loose fishing line out there. So if you're a scuba diver or a free diver, or even a swimmer for that matter, it could be very dangerous. So you have to be very careful. Never dive by yourself. Always go with a friend so they can alert authorities if you've gone missing or you're stuck underwater or whatever. Could be the difference between life and death if you bring somebody with you. If you're going to hunt on this beach, um, it's great in the summer, even if you're walking around barefoot. It's, it's okay, this beach is actually very clean. I've detected it for about 10 years plus. And when I first started, it was like a minefield. So many targets. Now, not so much. And it's, it's a clean beach. There's no kind of broken bottles or dangerous drug needles or anything like that. Very, very clean beach. So this is what I'm talking about trees where people sit. Each one of these trees in the summer people sit around them and there's really large gatherings people on their weekend holiday and they would just have a picnic around here and if you come here in the night or even in the day a few days later you can find lots of coins and if you're really lucky maybe a lost ring and I found many many rings on this beach One time I found a whole pile of coins. It must have been about 200 coins that had been buried around one tree. And that was obviously from the Buddhist shrine at the end of the beach. And they took all the unwanted coins which they couldn't spend. And all the coins were foreign coins, so you can't spend them in Hong Kong. But it's great if you like collecting coins. In the summer, these lifeguard stations really do do a good job of protecting the beach and the swimmers and if you come metal detecting in Hong Kong on this particular beach they're quite happy for you to clean up any of the lifeguards saying oh I'm doing a really good job and thank you for cleaning the beach etc etc but there are quite a few beaches in Hong Kong where you have to seek permission and one or two of them you actually have to write to the local council to ask for permission the water on Repulse Bay Beach is actually very clean compared to some of the beaches in Hong Kong. And if you go snorkeling here, you can see pretty far. But that doesn't mean it's clean. It actually can be quite dirty on times. And usually in the summer you may get algae blooms, so the water gets a bit murky. But in the winter it's very, very clear. So if you are trying to come here hunting in the winter, you probably have great visibility. As you can see there is. So in the winter it gets quite cold. Right now it's about 9 degrees um, outside air temperature. So in the water it's going to be like know, maybe a couple of degrees. Um, not ideal conditions if you're protecting in the water. But you can still find plenty in the winter in the sand. Um, but conditions today is not so good. And on this beach we have some new developments. There is a whole bunch of new restaurants and shops. So you're actually going to get a lot more 